Okay, so this is my review of the Ghost Drone 2.0 Aerial. This is the version that comes with the 4K sports camera built in. So they also do another version with a spherical camera, I think they call it, and that one has the optional VR kit as well, so you may see that listed on Amazon. This here is just a, a quick contents list. The mission statement from Ghost Drone, uh, the company Ehang, is that this is a drone that anyone can fly. And you'll notice here in the contents that uh, there's no controller, which initially might make you think it's hard to fly. I'll cover that in a second. So, um, and some specs here on screen, because you can pause the video and have a look through these. Um, I'll cover some off uh, a little bit later. I put it uh, as a comparison next to the DJI here, and it's very similar in size, but certainly the big significant difference for me is you don't have to carry around this big clumsy controller. Um, I love the Phantom, but that controller just keeps getting in the way in my bag. So really easy to set up. Uh, out of the box, you just have to attach the propellers. The camera is already installed and good to go. You just tap and then hold the power button on the front to get it to life. The camera is on a three-axis gimbal underneath to keep it super smooth. This is the G-Box, so you just turn the G-Box off and that you connect to either an Android or iOS device. Uh, I was using Android on this occasion, so it connects to Bluetooth, so you simply open the app, it automatically starts Bluetooth and will connect to the G-Box. The G-Box in turn then communicates with the drone. So once you've done that, there's a little calibration bit you have to do by spinning the plane round um, on both axes, so you have to do it horizontally and then spin up the side and do it again and uh, once you get most of those little blue dots covered um, you're good to go. The app itself is uh, all touch screen of course as you would expect um, and it's all automated so it downloads a map, you can just about see it, apologies for the glare on this video, and um, then you just hit the takeoff button, swipe it across and off it goes. There is no control, you have no pilot experience at all on these and this is the great thing about it, it really is for absolute beginners for drone flying. Uh, that clip there is actually from the drone taking off. It was super steady in the sky, um, it was actually a really calm day but I have flown this in some windier conditions and it really does uh, level out really really well. So now it always works um, in a, what they call a headless mode so when you push forward it will always go forward and back is always back so that little wheel in the bottom right hand corner of the screen you just slide it forward and back and left and right to, to fly the drone. And then you can also do touch points. So as you saw there, I just touch the screen, hit go, and it will just make its own way over to the mark that you set. And that is really, really clever. You get a little pointing arrow showing you which direction it's going to go, where it's facing. And now we clip to uh, some footage here that I've taken with this drone. Uh, so this down in Mudderford, I just again hit that auto takeoff button, got it up in the sky, up above the trees, tapped over by the water. Uh, goes. It is a little unnervy because uh, at this point it disappeared out of sight. I had no idea where it had gone. Um, but as you can see by the footage, it, it got, got, got some great results and um, I feel really impressed with that. It's a, a really smooth flight and uh, there was no communication dropout. I knew exactly where it was on my phone the whole time but I just couldn't see it. So then I brought it back to the park um, just to do a, a couple of uh, shorter distance uh, flights with it. The flight time is about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how aggressive the wind is. Uh, obviously, the windier it is, the shorter that time will be. Uh, and the range it quotes as a thousand meters. I haven't actually got that far, um, but uh, a colleague of mine who tried this same one uh, said that uh, he, he has maximized that, and it, it was really, really impressive. You get a talking. Uh, app I suppose you call it which gives you all the status updates the whole time as well and this is follow me mode so you just tap follow me and the camera and the drone will uh, actually track you on the screen and um, that, that was quite impressive so if you just uh, perhaps you're out for a ride or something and wanted to follow you this would be really really useful. Um, one thing uh, that uh, I was expecting that didn't happen was live view so you don't get a live view of any of this while you're recording it you do have to wait until you get home uh, and take the SD card put it into your computer. Um, but um, once you get the hang of it after a couple of flights, you can really gauge which way the camera is pointing and, and uh, train the drone on the, using the app to get some really incredible shots. So, overall, really, really impressive drone. Um, it's certainly side to side 
uh, to the Phantom 3 that we looked at earlier. It's got longer range, you don't have to carry as much, um, and yet it has arguably even a better camera with the 4K footage as well. Um, and the auto landing signal is finally capping it off there as well. Hope that's been helpful, and uh, thanks for watching.